So you're interested in being a private jet flight attendant. Well, I'm glad you're here because we're gonna break it down right here, right now. But before we do, if you could please kindly hit the subscribe and like button as I will continue to be uploading videos weekly that are luxury hospitality specific in the private aviation sector. First things first, in order to be a qualified candidate, you are required to have cabin safety training created for corporate aviation. If you are a commercial airline flight attendant intrigued in making the career transition into corporate aviation, you do in fact still need corporate aviation safety training. Plus multifaceted white glove service, etiquette, and culinary prowess training helps too. Business aviation safety training is expensive and it is self-financed, but is 100% necessary if you want to enter this field. Do thorough research and take a look at current job openings in the field. Google or on LinkedIn, corporate flight attendant or cabin attendant job opening. Then look under the required knowledge, skills, and abilities to see what the safety training these companies require. For example, in the United States, job listings for cabin attendants may say flight attendant specific training from flight safety or air care facts. Similar preference shown to candidates who have completed flight safety or air care facts or similar training within the past 12 months. Real job opening description right there, by the way. I've been to both air care facts and flight safety for my recurrent safety training, and I believe both to deliver quality in their safety training. There are other business aviation cabin attendant safety trainings out there. However, by choosing those, you do severely limit your opportunity for work in this field. The best way to enter this industry is to research and network like crazy. If you want a job in business aviation, then arm yourself professionally with the skill sets and training that current job openings are requesting from future candidates. Be courteous and kind in your networking. The industry is intensely small, so consistently ask yourself, how do I make a positive impression on as many people as possible? It is understandable why someone would want to be a corporate flight attendant. It's an attractive career path. Your office is a $65 million jet, and you get to travel to some of the most beautiful destinations in the world and serve some of the smartest, most interesting, wealthiest clientele that exists on the planet. But as appealing as all it may be, it's still a very demanding job and not everyone is cut out for it. You can train a skill, but I find it hard to train an attitude. You can learn the skills you need to be a top tiered corporate flight attendant, but you cannot force yourself to become someone who is passionate about service if that simply just isn't in your nature. This is the part where I sincerely and strongly implore you to be honest with yourself and your self-evaluation as we cover some of the characteristics that make a top tier corporate flight attendant. My definition of an excellent corporate flight attendant from a service perspective is someone who anticipates their guest needs with immaculate attention to detail. If you can harness the intrinsic skill of knowing what your client's wants and needs are before they ask, that is VIP luxury service. Although that is the ultimate expression of hospitality, let's talk about some other characteristics that will make a potential candidate successful in this industry. Keep in mind, these are characteristics are not necessarily quantifiable, but they are intensely qualitative. Punctuality. Here is one that anyone can control and be perfect at. Be 15 minutes early for everything in aviation. If you're on time, you're late. If your captain says be in the lobby at 8.30 a.m. to leave for the airport, be there at 8.15 checked out with your hotel receipt in hand, ready to go and ready to brief about the flight. This is the easiest tip to help secure a booking for a future flight back with an operator. Emotional intelligence. Exercise compassion and empathy. You have to genuinely like people, enjoy serving people, and constantly endeavor to understand the effect you have on others. It's the most important currency there is in the world, and it will be a huge indicator of your success as a corporate flight attendant. Having a high EQ, emotional intelligence, allows you to tune into the small nuances of your passengers' verbal and nonverbal signals and audit the service accordingly with the thoughtful ways. This is called impactful service. Corporate flight attendants are serving some of the smartest individuals of our time, and they will notice, appreciate, and respect you for your ability to deliver bespoke service to their likes and dislikes. Social chameleon. Be someone who can change and adjust to your audience. There is a wide range of private jet clientele, and it's imperative that as a corporate flight attendant, you use your emotional intelligence and adapt your style of service and hospitality. The service used for an English Lord is generally very different from the service used for an American rapper or pop star. It's not enough to understand and adapt to one singular audience of private jet passengers. You must be able to consistently understand and deliver that particular client's expectations and preferences.
be a problem solver. Aviation is Murphy's Law in motion. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. There are going to be constant deviations in your role and responsibilities as a corporate flight attendant, and you have to be willing, ready, and able to tackle those challenges without hesitation or self-doubt. Composure. Daniel Hume once compared running 11 Madison Park, voted the number one restaurant in the world in 2017, to a swan gliding in a body of water. On the surface, there is nothing but elegance, grace, and serenity to the onlooker. But underneath the water, those feet are paddling away tirelessly and rapidly. Being a corporate flight attendant is similar. You'll experience whirlwinds of problems and difficulties, but you must always keep your composure. Initiative. This ties in with being a problem solver, but there is no room in this industry to be, a pa to be passive in any endeavor that has to do with getting the job done. Be confident in your ability to problem solve and take charge to recognize any issues that may arise or at the doorstep already actively working to find a solution. You must be on and have a high energy in doing so. Stamina. This is a people business, and as with any industry which revolves around human interactions, there will be a mass amount of constantly changing human variables. Having the stamina to withstand the stressful spectrum of human factors is crucial to being a successful corporate flight attendant. Professional communication. This applies to both verbal and written communication. As a corporate flight attendant, your communication style and mannerisms matter. The words you say and write will dictate if hiring managers read your resume or if you're called back for a second interview. If you aren't already a reader, I highly recommend reading smart nonfiction books to enhance your vocabulary. This will also help both your written and verbal grammar skills to allow you to express yourself more articulately and intelligently. Task management. As you're aware, a corporate flight attendant is responsible for the majority of the in-flight service. The responsibilities and preparations begin on your layover, before the flight, obviously during the flight, and even after the guests disembark. Being able to prioritize and manage the ever-growing list of tasks is a critical skill. Humility. Corporate flight attendants are there to serve, and they are not there to be the star of the show. Having the humility to take the glamour out of the job and focus on the work itself will be noticed and appreciated by hiring managers. An important aspect to this is to mind your social media pages as well. There's no need for photos of you pretending to be the guest boarding the air stairs or sitting back in the cabin relaxing. Employers will notice this lack of discretion. This also means losing the ego. Having an ego signals that you believe you know everything and think you have nothing left to learn. There couldn't be a worse attitude to have as there is always something new to learn. I am constantly learning. Be confident in what you do know and be humble in the opportunity to learn what you don't. Discretion. It's called private aviation for a reason. Privacy, it's your job to be mindful of your client's confidentiality. This means not discussing who you may be flying, where you are going, or any incidents that happened in flight or public with anyone who is not on a need to know basis. It's also important to remember that these planes are owners home away from homes. It's very much an extension of their residences and places of comfort. Unless Architectural Digest is coming to their mansion, not many high net worth individuals want their homes photographed and published on social media. Therefore, just because you are hired to work on an owner's aircraft, you are not entitled, entitled to necessarily show it to the world. The corporate flight attendant golden rule, never bring up or discuss past flights with any guests, no matter what. You may ask the mister how his vacation went last week in Hawaii, but Mrs. thought he was in Geneva for work. See how you can get yourself fired real quick by not having discretion. Even if you are retelling a cute or funny anecdote of someone famous you flew to another guest, that guest may then be concerned, well, are they gonna go around on future flights and tell stories about me too? Flexibility. Be prepared, willing, and enthusiastic to work nights, holidays, weekends, and extended periods of time away from home. This is a very important aspect to consider and weigh out if you have kids, a significant other, or pets at home. Immaculate grooming. This means having a fresh, clean smile, your hair is back and professionally styled, excellently tailored suit, clothing, makeup, simple, natural if you're a lady, without being too over the top. It's the idea of looking the part. Even if you have zero experience with being at an executive level professionally, fake it until you make it. Dressing the part will help you act the part. A recent Penn State University study confirmed that when we smile, we not only appear to be more likable and courteous, but we're actually perceived to be more competent too. A smile is powerful. 
Crest white strips are my best friend, right alongside floss and mouthwash. We discuss which personalities and characteristics really shine and excel for the industry, but what about experience? Bonus, which professional experience gives you the best shot at getting your foot in the cumbersome door to private aviation? Any hospitality experience looks incredible on a resume. Experience working as a former yacht stewardess or yacht chef is spectacular as well. Luxury hotels like the Mandarin Oriental, Ritz-Carlton, the Peninsula, Waldorf Astoria, or Four Seasons also carry serious weight on a resume. Why? Working in a luxury establishment your clients already frequent provides you a deeper understanding of the level of service, discretion, and professionalism that they have come to expect in their lifestyles. You will naturally understand their lives and expectations after being groomed and trained by these luxury hotels. It is the legacy luxury hotel brands who still set the global benchmark for design, quality, and service for the entire hospitality industry. I truly hope you enjoyed and found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. If you have any other questions, please comment below and I eagerly and excitedly look forward to answering them for you.